Let's consider a classical system uh, which has f coordinates. So uh, using classical uh, description I can give the state of the system <coughs> by specifying these f uh, coordinates of its position and its corresponding uh, momenta. So I have a classical system with f coordinates so I can specify uh, the state of the system by giving f pairs q1 q2 qf are the coordinates of its position and the corresponding momenta p1 p2 pf so if we specify these values we have a specification of the state of the system uh, then we can tell its energy the total energy of the system is basically given by a function of its coordinates so it's a function of the state of the system q1 to qf and a function of its momenta, corresponding momenta, P1 to Pf. And this energy, total energy, can be written as a sum of terms that contain only momentum or only um, position coordinates. So let's say that uh, this is a, uh, this system has an energy term epsilon i i term which only depends on the momentum uh, i uh, momentum and uh, plus the other terms e prime which is a function of q1 to pf except pi so there is no pi in this function um, so how can this this be for example think about the energy of a simple harmonic oscillator the simple harmonic oscillator has 1 over 2 p squared over m uh, and 1 over 2 kx squared so you can see that it has one term here uh, which depends on the momentum only so this is possible now the question we would like to answer is what is the mean value of epsilon i provided that the system is in thermal equilibrium with a heat reservoir at absolute temperature t so if the system is in thermal equilibrium with a heat reservoir at absolute temperature T what is the mean value epsilon i bar so this is the question we would like to answer now we we know that for a classical system that is in thermal equilibrium with a heat reservoir we can use canonical distribution so canonical distribution basically gives us the following expression for the mean value of epsilon i epsilon i mean value by definition is the epsilon i multiplied by the probability distribution function exponential minus beta e Boltzmann factor dq1 to dpf and there is the constant c here which is 1 over the partition function 
z. The partition function z, remember, comes from the normalization condition. It's the integral of e to the minus beta e dq1 to dpf. All right, so uh, the mean value, as you can see here, for the total energy can be written as um, e is equal to epsilon i plus e bar, the term that includes the momentum uh, pi and the term and other terms. Uh, I can write for the mean energy epsilon i bar integral epsilon i e to the minus beta epsilon i plus e prime dq1 to dpf divided by the partition function integral e to the minus beta epsilon i plus e prime e to the minus beta e dq1 to dpf now uh, let's continue by separating the epsilon i and e prime terms so epsilon i bar the mean value will be integral epsilon i e to the minus beta epsilon i and i'm also separating the dpi term integral e to the minus beta e prime dq1 to dpf not including dpi divided by also separate the partition function integral e to the minus epsilon i dpi integral e to the minus beta e prime dq1 to dpf not including dpi now uh, these two these two terms will disappear and we will be left with by defining the partition function zi as integral e to the minus beta epsilon i dpi um, the mean value epsilon i bar will be something that we have seen we are familiar with minus derivative of natural logarithm of zi with respect to beta or minus 1 over zi del zi del beta so that's the term that appears uh, on the top so it's the numerator now if this term epsilon i is a quadratic term in momentum b times pi square for example it is p squared over 2m so b would be 1 over 2m in this as in the simple harmonic oscillator so then this partition function would become zi is minus infinity to plus infinity integral over all possible momenta, momenta e to the minus beta epsilon i dpi is integral from minus infinity to plus infinity e to the minus beta b pi squared dpi because i have assumed that epsilon i is b pi squared now define let's make a transformation of variables define y as beta to the one half pi and dy is equal to beta to the one half dpi so this integral is going to become for the uh, partition function integral minus infinity to plus infinity e to the minus b y squared and for dpi i have beta to the minus one half dy so as you can see here dpi is then beta to the minus one half dy 
Okay, but what I need is natural logarithm of uh, z. So if I go to natural logarithm of z, it's going to be minus 1 over 2 natural logarithm of beta, which doesn't include the y term in it, so it's going to be coming out of the integral, and plus the second term, natural logarithm of integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, e to the minus by squared dy. Now I remember what my y was. Uh, y is beta to the one half uh, dpi. But when I evaluate this integral, I'm going to get a number. So as you know, this is uh, the integral of a Gaussian gives a number. Uh, so this is a number. So when you take the derivative with respect to uh, beta minus del ln zi del beta, you will get uh, from the derivative of beta 1 over 2 beta plus 0 because the number derivative gives me 0. So this is equal to 1 over 2 kt. Uh, so basically I find that the mean value of the energy epsilon i is equal to 1 over 2 kt. 1 over 2 thermal energy. So this result can be generalized to all energy terms that include independent quadratic uh, terms of position and momenta. So this can be generalized. So we can state it as a theorem. So we can say that if a system Uh, described by classical statistical mechanics is in equilibrium at the absolute temperature T every quadratic independent term in its energy has a mean value of 1 over 2 Boltzmann constant times its absolute temperature. So this result is known as the equipartition theorem, so equipartition of energy. You can say that energy is shared equally by each independent degree of freedom which has a quadratic contribution to the energy of the system that is at equilibrium at absolute temperature uh, T. So let's summarize what we said. We started out by considering a classical system with f coordinates so that its class classical description of its state is given by f pairs of position and momenta and its energy is a function of its state and the energy includes independent terms that include momentum only or position only and uh, so I have separated a momentum dependent term epsilon i as a function of pi and then I can write the rest of the energy as E prime. Now, if the system is in thermal equilibrium with a heat reservoir at absolute temperature T, to find the mean value of any uh, variable of the system, we can use canonical distribution. So by canonical distribution, 
epsilon i bar is the integral epsilon i multiplied by the probability of having an epsilon i value e to the minus beta e dq1 to dpf divided by the partition function z which comes from the normalization condition so z is integral over all possible energies e to the minus beta e dq1 to dpf so i have separated epsilon i from the total energy expression so i have made it epsilon i plus e prime and then separating the epsilon i terms epsilon i e to the minus beta epsilon i dpi integral multiplied by the integral of the rest and uh, i can do that for both top and bottom and these two uh, disappear uh, from the partition function and from the numerator and i can see that the mean value of epsilon i is given by minus the derivative with respect to beta of natural logarithm of zi where zi is the partition function integral e to the minus beta epsilon i dpi and then if i assume that this energy has a quadratic dependence on the momentum i can see that by calculating natural logarithm of zi and taking its derivative with respect to beta with a minus sign that mean value should be 1 over 2 kt so this is basically a general result if a system described by classical statistical mechanics is in equilibrium at absolute temperature t every quadratic independent term in its energy due to its degrees of freedom will have a mean value of 1 over 2 kt so there will be an energy equal energy 1 over 2 kt per each independent degree of freedom that give me quadratic terms so energy is equally partitioned between degrees of freedom we can say so there, therefore it's called equipartition theorem